and welcome back to the Urology Care Podcast, the official podcast of the Urology Care Foundation. February is Black History Month, and the Urology Care Foundation is bringing more awareness to information that is of great value to black men and women. We have four doctors with us to share their knowledge on black men and women's health and how they can stay healthy in their lives. Stay tuned as Dr. McNeil, Dr. Stork, Dr. Sutherland, and Dr. Moses talk about this important topic. So why don't you start by introducing yourself to our audience? Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Keith McNeil. I am a urologic oncologist, and I practice at SUNY Downstate Health Sciences University in Brooklyn, New York. My name is Dr. Brian Stork. I am a urologist uh, at the University of Michigan, but I practice in Muskegon, Michigan, which is a relatively small community along the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. Hello, I'm Dr. Suzette Sutherland. I am Director of Female Urology at the University of Washington in Seattle, and also on the Education Committee for the Urology Care Foundation. Uh, I'm Kelvin Moses. I'm Associate Professor of Urology at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. I serve as the Fellowship Director for Urologic Oncology and focus primarily on the surgical and clinical management of advanced kidney, testis, and prostate cancer. What do you think is important for people to know about the Black community as it relates to urology? Within the Black community, I think that it's important that folks know about urologists and how much urologists can help. When most people think about urology, they think about prostate cancer, but there are a number of other conditions that we treat. I think for Black History Month, we wanna start by celebrating um, our African-American colleagues in urology. African-Americans have made great contributions to urology, certainly in private practice and also in academics. Uh, So it's always good to begin by celebrating what we have. I think moving forward, we want to focus on recruiting more African-American students into medicine. Well, some things to understand. Number one, the Black community is not a monolith. And so you need to have the cultural awareness to understand the different environments that Black patients are presenting from. Um, the disparities that have been noted in all urologic conditions are no different than disparities health uh, in healthcare overall. And so for, pa- for physicians who are treating Black patients, you need to have a cultural and historical understanding. Uh, you need to have good communication skills. You need to understand that the distrust that many have for the medical system is not misplaced, but rather has a historical and tangible um, context to it. Um, The other thing to understand is that we need to diversify the medical field in general so that patients do feel comfortable uh, coming in and and speaking to us. And particularly urology, where such a sensitive, many things that we deal with are such a sensitive topic to begin with. So having people from a diverse background helps to obviate some of that concern. And why are people in the Black community at higher risk for some conditions? That's a great question, and it's a matter of nature versus nurture. Of course, we've learned that, you know, genetics makes some folks more susceptible to certain types of cancer, uh, prostate cancer namely, but also environment may play a role, diet and other things as well. So years ago, we thought that there might be a genetic difference that could account for this, and possibly that's the case. But over the course of the last 20 years, we've really focused more on socioeconomics. Um, We've focused on poverty. We've focused on income disparities, um, food insecurities, um, access to healthy foods, and the trauma um, of modern living, and specifically systemic racism. So all of these things uh, put together can create a um, state of chronic stress, which can lead to a variety of medical conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, um, stroke, cancer. 
And specifically for urology, we worry about the prostate cancer and bladder cancer, um, prostate cancer in men and bladder cancer, both in men and women. Well, we recognize that there are disparities in medical care based on race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation. Uh, today, there's so much work being done looking at what truly lies behind these disparities. And when we look at race, and especially since you're asking me that during Black History Month, when we look at African Americans, historically, there are a lot of factors attributing to genetics to explain overall poor health status of Black communities when compared to whites. But today, although we still have a long way to go towards our own understanding, we certainly know much more and are much more aware of the many diverse and important aspects that can lead to inequalities in medical care. Um, we call these overall social determinants of health, and they have nothing to do with genetics. So not just based on genetics at all, but on social factors that affect the patients, things like their social economic status, uh, can they afford the medical care? Do they have insurance? One's physical uh, access to care. So where do they live? Can they get to where they need to be to get the care that they need? Uh, there's also conscious and unconscious bias, both on the part of patients and medical providers that influence the treatments that may or may not be offered to the patient. And then medical misinformation that sometimes can run through communities due to some historical landmark events that have happened to the African-American community that led to widespread distrust within some cultures, uh, uh, distrust of the medical community as a whole. There are uh, social, environmental, and political conditions that predispose certain populations to adverse outcomes from certain diseases. And so when we talk about higher risk, say, of prostate cancer, uh, you have to look at screening patterns, you have to look at treatment patterns, but you also have to look at the environmental conditions that can exacerbate a cancer. Uh, the same thing goes for breast cancer, colon cancer. You see a lot of patterns that are similar, uh, and so the, you have to understand those things. Um, Again, there, there are issues with access to care. And so some people are not able to access appropriate screening and uh, treatment for urologic diseases or, or any disease. And so I don't, I, and there, I'll also push back against the notion that somehow there's a, a genetic predisposition. Um, the genetic component of let's say urologic cancer is so complex that you can't pinpoint one gene that may or may, or may not be different based on one race, because race is really a social construct, it's not a biological construct. Uh, and so when you look at risk of disease, you have to have a much broader context than looking just at the disease itself. You have to look at everything that contributes to that. And how can we bring more awareness of the importance of Black men and women's health and seeing a doctor regularly? Please, 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 I cannot beg you enough. Please uh, see your primary care doctor regularly, regularly. And if there's a, con a condition or something that arises that needs referral to a urologist, please follow through. And we are here to work together as a team with you. Uh, as a patient, you play a role, family members, loved ones, caregivers. We're all here to work together to ensure that you have the best outcome. Yeah, so Black History Month is certainly a great time um, to think about your health. It's after the holidays. It's a good time at the beginning of the year to think about how healthy you want to be and what kind of lifestyle you want to live. The Urology Care Foundation has created uh, fact sheets, posters, and podcasts for both African-American men and women uh, that can help them stay healthy. These freely available educational materials are available at www.urologyhealth.org. In the case of this medical distrust, 
we need to do our best to understand the history of why the distrust is there. We need to respect the distrust, not just try to ignorantly brush it away saying, well, that doesn't happen today or that's not applicable today because that doesn't help. The distrust is very real and prevalent and we need to help to gently educate and re-educate patients, alleviate their fears and vocally advocate for them. Uh, in the case of men and prostate cancer, as an example, the risk of prostate cancer is higher in African-American men. The data shows that about one in five men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer sometime in their lifetime. And in the African-American community, it's one in four men. But getting that word out hasn't been easy. There has been a lovely initiative for which the Urology Care Foundation has been involved to try and spread correct information and education to African-American men. Uh, it started in Indiana and it's called the Indiana Black Barbershop Health Initiative. Uh, and it recognized that many African-American men have trusting and ongoing relationships with their barbers. So it provided an opportunity to disseminate accurate health information and even provide some services. It's been going on for a number of years already, and it's been very successful in changing the cultural attitudes of African-American men about their health. And it served as a role model for other similar programs around the country. It's great. So it goes back to my point about diversification of the healthcare system on all levels, not just physicians and nurses, not just PAs and nurse practitioners, healthcare administrators, uh, insurance companies. Um, and so when you have a representative group, then you can build a trust with a community that has a historical barrier to obtaining health care. It takes advocacy on a policy level. It takes education. Uh, and a lot of the efforts are focused on education within the community, which is great. And that should be done for everyone. But we need to, again, go back to my point about educating physicians about cultural awareness, cultural competency, and making sure that the, the statements that we make about uh, believing that everyone has a right to health care and, and, and uh, everyone should receive health care, we should be performing the actions and policy changes that will actually bring that about. During Black History Month, what health advice for patients do you think is important to share? I think that it's important to share with men that men should get screened for prostate cancer. Uh, men within the African-American community should start screening a bit earlier than men from other communities. So if you're 45 or 50, please have a conversation with your doctor about whether or not you should be screened for prostate cancer. And also, you know, if you have blood in your urine, if you have difficulty urinating, if you leak urine from time to time, please seek out the opinion of a urologist. There are lots of ways that we can help and everything doesn't require surgery. I can tell you it's tough to stay healthy. I struggle with my weight. I struggle with my blood pressure. So I can completely empathize with some of the struggles uh, people have to stay healthy. But it's important at the end of the day, you're really the only one looking out for your health. And to be able to do that effectively, you wanna have social support. So you wanna have friends and family members that are working to stay healthy and holding you accountable. And you also wanna develop a relationship with a trusted physician who can help guide you through more specific um, aspects of your health. I would really just like to reinforce the benefits or the need really for regular checkups with your doctor. There's so much more we know today about preventive health overall, but you can't be preventive or take care of yourself or even advocate for yourself if you are unaware of your particular health situation. So you need to have regular checkups and keep on top of your own health so you'll live a nice long life to be there for the rest of those you love. I think patients should understand that their health is their responsibility and that they should ask the questions that they want answered. Um, it's very intimidating to go to the physician. I myself, even being a physician, have clammed up in the, in the 
exam room <laughs> when I really should have spoken up. So don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion if available. Um, learn as much as you can from reputable sources uh, about the condition that you're seeking treatment for uh, and, and, and really take control of your health as much as you can. Thank you to Dr. McNeil, Dr. Stork, Dr. Sutherland, and Dr. Moses for being a part of this conversation and sharing their knowledge. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association. For more information on today's topic and for all things urology health, visit urologyhealth.org. That's urologyhealth.org.